the whole YouTube channel. Grizzly and McD here, and you are watching and listening to Nerd is the New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. Episode number 153. Today, I am joined by the one, the only, Wildfire One. Hi! You can say something. <laughs> I was just mad I didn't go. want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. And someone who we enjoy doing podcasts with, we enjoy doing content with. I'm sure you'll enjoy watching his streams when he does them. The one, the only, Ice Cold Nice. Hey there, guys. How you doing? My favorite icy pop. <laughs> so, so, those of you who are watching, you may notice that uh, Ice Cold does not have a camera on. Um, he he's our resident cripple today. <laughs> that, uh, you know, made it to where he can't put his camera on. So we're okay with that. We're just glad that he's here to participate in this mournful occasion oh well you, you see i'm trying I, now i can't smile like i'm trying to smile and be happy but you're like mournful and i know yeah, because i was <laughs> about to say something funny like i was gonna say something like you know here's a hint as to why ice cold can't uh can't be on uh, can't use his camera because um he's naked and here's a hint as to why he has trouble jacking off right now oh yeah, because cause one of my reasons to do that is gone. <laughs> mournful occasion. <laughs> yeah, that, it all makes sense now. It's not a podcast about whatever. It's a podcast about about the poor ice cold that can't masturbate. Like, no, no, see, see, I can't, I can't because one of my inspirations is gone. I mean, I, I, I totally masturbate to Betty White too. John. <laughs> Yeah, John- <laughs> oh, 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 shit, I, now, now I feel awkward, now I feel fucking awkward, <laughs> we're talking about the deaths of three people, uh-huh. um, and we generally don't go negative, but this is going to be more of like a tribute, a tribute, we're, we're, we're celebrating the lives of these people and how they touched us, and it's going to be three people, it's going to be, of course, Grizz, John Madden, the one who brought a whole generation into gaming whether you want to believe it or not. And well, he's the face the of, voice, of, of video games well. that have to do with to have Madden on it. Yeah. He's John yeah. fucking Madden. Like it John if you don't know John Madden games football. then you haven't been playing video games long like football yeah. And then the loss of one of the greatest icons is the late great Betty White. Thank you Finally. for being a friend. Uh, uh, like she's with the rest of the Golden Girls, but we're going, mm-hmm. and then and then there's one more person we're going to talk about, and then and then of course Bob Saget, America's dad. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely America's dad, but also one of the most pervy fucking like comedians out there, and I loved him for that. Like yeah. he was so interesting. Like he was, and that's how it shows. You know, I'm just going to go into this little tangent. It shows how good an actor he is because he can act like the most innocent father figure, but he's really a fucking perv. And and I say perv isn't like he has a really dark slash hilarious pervy sense of humor. But uh, we'll get we'll get to we'll get to that. I think who should we start out on, guys? I would say we start out with Bob Saget and end with Betty White. S H G E T, by the way. Yep. Not I T. I made that mistake once. Fool me Sag once, it. sag it on me. Fool me twice, <laughs> sag it on sag you. It all over you. <laughs> so, okay, Bob Saget has he actually started out as a comedian in what the eighties, maybe before that. Yeah, in the eighties. Um, he was a pretty. Yeah. He was. I, I remember watching uh, with my dad, my mom, some of his comedy, and I, one of the things I remember the mostly is there was a joke that he did about like the crack of the butt. And I don't know if you if you guys know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. Like it's legit. My dad to this day, Sofisto to this day will go crack of the butt, crack of the butt, crack of the butt, and it's like it's a throwback. And I can't. It's a, it's a part of my life that I can't forget because Bob Saget uh, 
we watched that particular Bob Saget comedy show on HBO back in the day, and you know, like it's something that hits me. He has some of the best one-liners. That he was hilarious. You don't mm-hmm. really, he, he was. He was. My one of my favorite lines from him was in How High, when uh, the guy goes to Narcotics Anonymous because he's addicted to pot. This is, in fact, you and, told me this when we when I when mm-hmm. we were talking about this podcast when we were on the phone the other yeah. day. But go on, go on. And uh, the guy stands up, and says, no, "I'm here because I'm addicted to marijuana." And Bob Saget stands up and goes, "Not an addiction. I mean, do you suck dick for coke? Because I do." <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just I just remember one of the other guys that going, <laughs> "I was like, what the." That was a very like a really funny <laughs> iconic moment for him. Uh, one of the most recent things he's been in was the the Full House continuation with uh, Fuller House. That yeah. uh, Fuller House that was on Netflix that they canceled. You know they cancel everything, but uh, you know once you get into it, I I, I don't know. I, I I liked seeing the old family come in from time to time. So seeing Danny walk in and, and be the grandpa or whatever was really cool. What about you, Ice Cold? You're awful quiet down there. Why don't you tell us one of your favorite uh, um, well, moments so, from Bob Saget? So Bob Saget, um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit younger of the three here. Um, so I've seen probably about 30 episodes of Full House of Bob Saget. I've definitely watched, you know, Fuller House. Um... But there is one uh, that, or one episode from a completely different show that had Bob Saget on. Cause I, I recognize this Bob Saget because, like, you know, I've seen Full House, seen Fuller House. I saw an episode of, uh, what was that? I think it was Law and Order LA. Oh, I had a feeling it'd be a Law and Order show. Everyone was on those. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, everyone, Tell me about the episode. Oh, I I don't remember much of the episode. I just remember that he was on there. Saget had and, a really good acting repertoire. He could oh, like Oh yeah, he he was able to like you could place him in anything. He could do he and, could do one minute really funny guy, he could be himself, or he could be like a really dramatic actor. And he he had that that the chops for that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so losing him was it was sad. Um does does anyone know how he passed? Uh I do not recall how. Well, continue, continue All with your story. All I know is that they found him in his hotel room. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it, it, but, it, it, they said no foul play or anything like that. So yeah. that's yeah, no drugs. But, it wasn't like an OD. But continue, uh, continue. Another, cool. But look, the most recent time I've seen Bob Saget was when he was on the mass scene. I forgot. And, I yeah, forgot you forgot. About that yeah, show. the squiggly monster. I did. Well, I did. I I don't watch it. So like. I, I'm excited. That, did he sing well? Yeah, he he made it through uh, what the premiere and the playoffs for that season. Okay, I I did I I forgot that the Mass Singer's a thing. Um, I was that's I'm happy to hear he was in that. Yeah. I mean, uh, how long was ago was like, that? Uh, that was 2020. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was it was one of the things because especially Matt Singer because they're covered up, you know, in a fucking yeah. Uh, I would outfit. hate to do that. I would hate. I would seriously hate to be in the Matt Singer because you imagine having to move around and you got this fucking mask on and all this heavy equipment. See, see, see. I I would agree with you if I didn't wear a full body suit like that willingly. <laughs> To those of our viewers, you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say it here. <laughs> oh, it yeah. took me a second. Yeah, there you, you go. You can say it. It's not a bad word. I'll no, judge I you a little them, bit. I want them. You'll judge me a little bit. I want them to think. I will not kink shame you, sir. I mean, let's. I'm, I'm on. I'm on the IMDb page, and like it starts at 1980. It just says like it shows a TV series and shows he's been in. Uh, I remember he did a lot of comedy skits or comedy specials, like like I said. Um, but let's just let's go over some of these some of these uh, these shows he's been in. Maybe we'll we'll recognize them. Maybe we won't. If not, it's still good, you know, for you guys, the viewer and the listener, to uh, kind of go over this with us. It is indeed a celebration of what they did while they were around. 
But that said, though, Bob Saget will be missed. Um, mm -hmm. If you grew up as a teen in the 90s, you will always remember Danny Tanner. Always. Yep. yep. You know, along, alongside, almost almost alongside with people like Urkel. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so uh, starting in the 1980s, he was, in a he was in a short show called Devices. He was a therapy patient. And, I, and this is off of IMDb, guys. If I miss something, don't hate me. <laughs> hate the website. Don't hate the player at the game. <laughs> uh, Full Moon High. He was a sports telecaster. Or just a, yeah, sport, sportscaster is what it says. Uh, at ease. 1983. Uh, 1983 again, he was in all... Oh, The Greatest American Hero. He was a cook in that. That was a good show. Did he reprise the role? It's, it's called Wizards and Warlocks. Was the episode, and I'm sure that Wizard, I'm sure that Greatest American Heroes, at least it was on Netflix or like Hulu or something like that. It's on one of our favorite streaming devices, so I'm sure we can watch it and you can see him there. Love that show. Believe it or not, I'm walking on. Yeah, there's a. Good, anyway, I'm going on a tangent. Um. New Love, American Style, 1985. Uh, I've never heard of that. Critical Condition, 1987. Oh, wait, what the fuck? Hold on. Okay, all the all-new Mickey Mouse Club, 1989. He played Danny Tanner. So, uh, you talked about, you know, Full Moon High. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, as a uh, bit of a short, or a bit of a short movie. By the way, the person who played, uh... Mr. Yeah, Mr. Miyagi was in there. Oh, Pat Ma Marito. Uh, Pat Morita. Ma yeah, yep. Pat Morita. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking love me some Mr. Miyagi. But I would feel like even if it was a small role as a sportcaster, uh, Full Moon High is a great. I would say a B movie. Really? Just it's watch. a great. It's a great B movie to watch. You remember yeah. it? I don't think I've. I probably saw it, but I completely forgot. Yeah, I, I've I've seen it. I feel it's, like it's, it's one hilarious. of those movies that was on all the time in the eighties. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was <laughs> hilarious. So okay, all new Mickey Mouse Club. I I remember that Danny Tanner. Oh, ah, I lost my place. So no, Full House did start in eighty seven. Um, yeah. So you're seeing Danny Tanner. Eighty nine. So house. yeah. So then he came in. He yeah. came on as a, a guest. Then that was cool. Yes. The ABC TGIF. He was played as Danny Tanner. By that time, I'm I'm sure he was. They, that show was very popular. So they were using him for whatever they could. I know mm -hmm. they were doing every. They're doing like was it James Cool or Dave Coulier was in everything at one point. Yep. And uh, uh, I can't remember the guy who played Uncle Jesse. What's his name? I love the actor. Yes, He's yes. a very. A, a, attractive dude i'm a guy and i'll say that like oh. um, uh, uh john stamos john stamos and that guy doesn't look like he aged like maybe One like bit. three oh, years bitch. after yeah. the fucking show everyone else is like ah, i'm old fucking dave coulier looks all fucking like puffed up and shit like the state puff martin and i love the guy and I love his acting and all that, but he looks a lot older than he did. And here's here's John Stamos, like, hey, uh, he was on Quantum Leap in 1992. Two, uh, the grandmother's house to grandmother's house we go. He was in that in 92. For goodness sake, in 93, I don't remember that the Larry Sanders show. I remember he did, I, but Larry Sanders show had everyone in it at one point. Yeah, one of those HBO shows that just 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 had all sorts of different people. Um. Almost like, uh, if you guys remember, um, Tales from the Crypt had all sorts of people at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Father and Scout, that was in 94. Full House, 1987 to 1995. Uh, which I think a lot of people will remember him on the most. Full House, there was a lot of really good moments, really good uh, episodes. A lot of them featuring Danny, who, uh, or, sorry, uh, Danny Tanner, the character, but featuring uh, Bob Saget, who played a, uh, a father of three girls that the mother had passed away. The youngest was played by twins. Yeah. The Olsen <laughs> twins, Olsen. which those two were just, they grew up to be a shit show much <laughs> later on. But, oh, uh, I mean, no one knows, hears of them now, but they were... Like, the, Hollywood crazy. fucked those kids yeah. up, dude. Like, well, bad. that's what happens to childhood actors, though. Not like all of them. But a lot. Well, not all of them, but, but 80%, 80 of them. I agree. 80% of them either 
do drugs and die. Do drugs, go to porn and die, or go to porn do drugs. Or die. just, or just die. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's bad. bad. It's, it's so bad. Holly, Hollywood is a horrible place. Like, we love it, but it brings forth the worst in people as far as like how certain things go. Yeah, that's a podcast all its own. So he was in uh, the, okay, the Jeff Foxworthy show. I'm sure you guys remember that he played himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The Naked Truth. He played himself. Uh, Ellen, he played himself. Reporter number four in Meet Wally Sparks. What was that about? That sounds familiar. I have no idea, but who hasn't been on the Ellen show? True. 1998 was, uh, let's see. 97 was Meet Wally Sparks. Sorority, uh, Becoming Dick was 2000. (laughs) I always laugh every time I hear that. Uh, Raising Dad was a I guess a show that was on 2001 to 2002 uh Dumb and Dumber hmm 2003 he was mm-hmm. Jessica's dad I didn't even know that I'm not a f- but I was never a big fan of Dumb and Dumber I always thought that show that movie those movies were just fucking stupid Well the the name is Dumb and Dumber for yeah. a reason Yeah Dumb and Dumber Huff he played a guy named Butch in 2004 Listen up he played Mitch Madagascar He played a zoo animal voice Casper's Scare Cool School, he was in that. Uh, Law and Order, special, there you go, Special Victims Unit. Oh, yeah, that's SVU, but he was also, if I recall, in L.A. I believe it. James Kennedy and Stu Stone featuring Bob Saget rolling with Saget. The Turtles, uh, Madcap Misadventures, uh, he was, played Barry Turtle in 2007. Free Radio, 2008. 2009, Surviving Suburbia. The Bus, it was a short in 2010. Entour- he was in Entourage. Grandfathered, Robot Chicken. Of course he was in Robot Chicken. <laughs> uh, who'd he play? Mike O'Malley, Galactus and Cable Guy. Holy shit. Yep, yep, Galactus. <laughs> okay. Of all people. Uh, right? The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon. Mm. Michael Bolton's Big Sexy Valentine's Day Special. And that was in 2017. Uh, Nightcap, Level Up Norge. I haven't heard of that one. Self in Full House, I guess. That's who he played. Fuller House, which we talked about. The Masked Singer, which you mentioned, Ice. And Mm -hmm. uh, Just Headlines and Killing Daniel, which it says is completed, but it's... it's, I don't know if it, it says 2021, but... Yeah, um, it was completed before his passing. I mean, we don't all live forever, but at least we can leave behind a legacy. And I would say that uh, Bob Saget did just that. All I know is, who am I gonna, you know, sell my coke to? <laughs> gotta get that, gotta get that head somewhere. <laughs> oh, but no, he, he will deeply be missed by oh, yeah. his fan. Okay, well then we're moving on to. Um, the legend himself. The legend himself. Man, Football! The legend of voices, Mr. John Madden. Football. So, I, I'm a, there's only so much I can say about John Madden because, like, I know he was a coach. I think he did the Raiders once upon a time or something like that. He was actually drafted by the Eagles. Okay. He was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles in 1958. But he was drafted as a part of the practice squad. Well, tell us, mm-hmm. tell us what you know uh, then. Tell what you guys know. I'm, I'm probably not going to chime in too much on this one because I only know so much. I know the video games, and even then, I didn't really play much of John Madden's games. I had maybe three of them. Uh, I played a lot of them as a kid. You know, back then I was big into football, and John Madden was the voice of football. John Madden was. 85 when he passed. Wow. He, I could have sworn he was older than that. Yeah, no, he was 85. He was born in April 10th, 1936. Do we know how he died? So, old age. Um, there will never be another John Madden, and we will forever be indebted to him for all he had uh, for all he did to make football and NFL to what it is today. He made, he did, he did a lot of con- 
contribution to football and and especially when football comes into video games like Grizz said. Um, From to 68, he was a linebacker coach for the Oakland. Yeah. Game. Okay. Um, before that, let's see. He started his coaching career in 1962. Oh, 50? 60. 1960. Yeah. Uh, at Allen Hancock College as an assistant coach. Okay. In 63, mm-hmm. he became head coach. In 64, he went to San Diego State as defensive coordinator. Um, in 67... The Oakland Raiders hired him as a linebacker coach, and in 69 to 1978, he became the Oakland Raiders head coach, who led the team to eight playoff appearances in that nine-year span, and the uh, first uh, franchise Super Bowl title at Super Bowl XI. During his head coaching career, he never had a losing season. Mm-hmm. And holds the highest winning percentage among NFL coaches who coach a hundred games plus. Wow! Mm-hmm. So he um, is not only a legend in NFL, but he will always be a legend to the now Las Vegas Raiders and sports mm-hmm. gamers, of course. Uh, for I think all but three years, he was coaching the Raiders. Um, he got first in the uh, AFC West division hmm. for, uh, you know, all but three years. Yeah, mm-hmm. after, he, after he retired as a coach in 1979, he became the color commentator for NFL on every mm-hmm. network. And he color commentated for games on every single station. He received 16 Sports Emmy Awards for his commentary. He's coming to. When did you say he passed? December 28th. So a day before Betty White. So he went, Betty White went, and then Bob Saget went. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, it was like, it was like Bob Saget died like two days into the new year. All, all I you know would say is um, John Madden's, I, I got introduced into football, introduced to football, I should say. He made it interesting. Um, oh yeah, he he did. Um, if I recall, it was on the Sega. Cause we were, we had that in the back family room back back then when buttons only had you know three to four buttons and yeah, it wasn't like twelve uh, D pad and then yeah. hidden ones that you got to push. <laughs> back in my day, back in my day, we only had three buttons on that start and select. Not even select half the time. Those, those were the fancy controllers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those were the third party controllers back in the day. Jesus Christ. He will be greatly missed by multiple generations. Not only was he and still is the voice of football. But like I said earlier, he the gateway to generations of gamers were sports fans and then started to play Madden football. With that, he paved the way in, in a lot of aspects. John Madden, if football had a persona, it would be John Madden. Mm-hmm. John yep. Madden lived, breathed, shat, ate, fucked football. This is what he did. That was his life. I don't think anyone was expecting Betty White to pass away. Honestly, I could have sworn she was the last Highlander. I thought she was going to live forever. Like, she was probably going to outlive us. Well, and, and, that, and that honestly is a testament to how kind-hearted she was. If the whole world comes together and says she went too soon. Oh, yeah. that that You got a damn point. A lot of you will know her from... Betty White from uh, the Golden Girls, but she's been around since like 1945, as far as Hollywood's concerned. Uh, maybe even earlier than that. Um, do you guys know what year she was born? I think she's like 22. Uh, yeah, 22 in Illinois. She died 18 days before she turned 100. That's mm. fucked up. Did you see what Google did for her birthday? Oh, yeah. They, they did that. You put her name in there, and you look her up, and it said, thank you for being a friend. It showed a picture. It was really good. Yeah, it, it still does that. 
You look at it. Oh, Grizz, if you can, if you want, look it up. It, as soon as I saw that, I, I, I was my heart was touched. Yeah, it's... Again, like you said at the beginning of this, like, if the whole world goes out of its way to go, we miss you. The whole mm-hmm. world, like, unitedly, is sad at Betty White's passing, then you know that she touched a lot of people. She was something special. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't realize about her. Oh, that she's in the Guinness Book of World Records. For? For longest TV career by an entertainer. Yep. She's earned it. I mean, she... Imagine being around since 1922. She's seen some shit. When did you guys first see Miss Betty White? In what role? The Golden the Golden Girl. Golden girls. girls. She was the last remaining Golden Girl. Yeah. Uh, back when my grandmother, my mom's mom, was alive, uh, we'd watch it all the time at her place. Mm-hmm. And, and when my mom would visit her, my grandma, we just watch it. We'd sit and watch it, and I thought it was cute. I mean, you know, I was a young man, 12, 12, 10 years old, thinking, "Why am I watching these old ladies?" But <laughs> like, it's it's it became a good memory. You know, as, as things tend to do. And I remember watching and laughing with, with my parent, with my mom and, and my grandma. And it was, it was, it was a very good memory for me. The Golden Girls was one of the few, like whenever I was younger, going to like the sitter or daycare or whatever, like one of the few daytime soaps that I enjoyed watching. I wouldn't call it, it a soap though. It was a comedy sitcom whatever yeah I get what you but mean but it was one of the few you know being four, five, six years old you know there was either Days of Our Lives or Golden Girls I yeah. would use Golden Girls every time because Golden Girls was funny it, it reminded me of my grandmother around all of her kids Betty White was in a lot of other things as well, and and she showed up later on as, uh, you know, jokes and stuff. And in fact, I think there was there were a few jokes that are kind of sad to think about now when uh, people are talking about like Betty White's gonna outlive us all, and that that uh, she was around before sliced bread. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you guys seen which, that. Which is yeah, which is true. Um, because it was sliced bread. Bread was like invented in like twenty. 28. 28, yeah. So that's fucking cool. Like, the best thing before sliced bread was Betty White. So let's uh, let's go through some of these, some of this this list of, of what she's done. Maybe we're definitely going to see some stuff that's probably before our time. In 1955, she was declared honorary mayor of Hollywood. Wow. Oh, wow. That's actually an honor. 55, like... Is huh. the first lady of television. I'm going to go on with a list of what she's done, starting with uh, 45, which, she was, like I said, she was in that time to, time to Kill. Not a time to kill. Time to Kill. She played an extra. Uh, Hollywood on television, 1949. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was in a show called Life with Elizabeth in mm-hmm. 1952 to 1955. The I Millionaire. Am. Okay, The Millionaire. In uh, 1956. Uh, Date with the Angels from 1957 to 58. Mm-hmm. Uh, advise and Consent in 1962 as a senator in TV show. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Bessie Adams. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. The United States Steel Hour. God, that, that, that sounds like a great... Little C, uh, C, uh, series there. Another World, uh, 1964, as Brenda Barlow. It sounds like it could have been a soap. Probably. Or something like uh, that. That's Life in 68. Okay. Petticoat Junction in 69. Okay, okay. A mini series called Vanished in 71. She had what uh, looks like two TV parts. Hostess. Yeah. Yep. There's a TV series called uh, Lucas Tanner in 75 and a show in 1973, The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Yep. 1973 to 1977. As Sue Ann Nevins. I forgot she was in The Mary Tyler Moore Show. 
Um, in seventy seven to seventy eight, she was in the Betty White show. Yep. But here's the thing: she played Joyce Whitman. <laughs> she wasn't Betty White. In seventy five, she was also on the Carol Burn- Burnett show. Ah, yeah, that's that's, oh. that's not on here. And See, seventy six to seventy seven, she was on the Sunny and Cher show. Uh, she was on the Love Boat, as Grizz mentioned, from uh, nineteen eighty 1980 to nineteen eighty five. I wonder if she came. Yeah, it looks like she had the same uh, the same character each time. So yeah. she was a she was a reoccurring character. Uh, who's the boss? She was on nineteen eighty five. Oh wow! She was a parade hostess, and who's the boss? And who's the boss is one of the ones my my mom my mom and I used to watch weekly. We love that show. Um, yeah. Mama's yeah. Family, one of my mom's favorite shows from 1983 to 1986 she was in days of our lives days of our lives in 1988 1989 one to grow on i remember that her role in the golden girl as rose was also her role in empty nest really as well as in nurses oh yeah rose rose nyland there she is in empty nest in in was the lead role as Rose Nyland. It you're in, you're not shitting me. I'm looking at it. I see this. Rose Nyland in the Golden Girls, Rose Nyland in Empty Nest. So she literally just reprised the same role in the Golden Girls as she did in Empty Nest. I had no idea oh, Grizz, you just taught me something. So Empty Nest is nineteen eighty nine to nineteen ninety two. The Golden Girls was nineteen eighty five to nineteen ninety two. Which hmm Interesting. And then you had the Golden Palace where she continued as Rose, uh, which was the basic, like, what happened after the Golden Girls, I believe. Uh, Which I really never really watched. It was 1992, 93. It was a really short-lived series. Maybe it was meant to be. Maybe it was kind of like an ending to the ending. Uh, Lake Placid, 1999. Lake Placid, she was in Hercules, the TV series. Yeah, when I first saw Hercules, I'm like, there's no way that's Disney. No, it's the TV series. Yeah. It's the TV series. And then The Story of Us in 1999. Allie McBeal. You guys remember Allie McBeal. Uh, She was on that in 99. 2000, she was in Whispers and Elephant's Tale. Tom Sawyer in 2000. She was in the, uh, uh, let's see. uh, Wild Thornberries. Yeah, I was just about to say Wild Thornberries. In 2000, she played, uh, she was in the anniversary. She played Sophie Hunter. And Grandma Sophie, and uh, so I, I guess the same character in yeah. all of them. Uh, Ladies' Man in 1999 to 2001, and, and then there's finally King of the Hill in 1999 uh, to 2002. Dorothy Ellen and Della, Dahlia, Delia, Delia. Yeah, the se- that 70s show. So she she was a reoccurring character in that 70s show. Which how could you not? Love that. Bringing down the house in two thousand three. Uh, this so far, this is a long list of 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 achievements of stuff that she's done, well, and this is never. Yeah, don't forget, there's like all the small little talk shows that she was on. I love it. Okay, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, which guys, you gotta love that show. Like that. That's when Cartoon Network was good. That was in its golden. Yeah, in its golden <laughs> girls. <laughs> so, Ponyo. 2008. The English voice for Ponyo for uh, Yoshi. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Boston Legal was 2005 to 2008. Um, here's a fun little tip. The character she played, Boston Legal, same character from the practice. Oh, that's cool as fuck. WWE Raw? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you were looking for, Grizz? No. Okay. No, there, that one was, one. uh... She, an episode, uh, or not an episode, quote, quote, but it was when uh, they were in uh, L.A., I think? 2014? You know what? If 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 Donald Trump can be in WWE, why not Betty White? Dude, I would have loved to see Betty White kick, like, The Rock's ass. And she, you know what? I bet you know that Dwayne Johnson would let her do it. Exactly! <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. 2016 uh, crowded. He was also on the 40th anniversary special of Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah, I do. I remember seeing uh, that was on Hulu. It was it was showing it after she passed. Uh, crowded 2016. Bones 2015 to 2017. 
Toy Story 4. Betty White, she played herself. Well, no, then it says Betty White. White. Oh, Bitey White. Bitey. Yep. Yeah, you see what they did there? Bitey White. 2013, she played herself in Betty White Goes Wild. Yep. Is that the one you were waiting for? It was. Betty White, well, I mean, was Snoop Dogg involved? Yeah, I think that was the one. Uh, she was she was around. She worked hard to get where she was. She she was a very talented actress. Oh yeah, definitely. I kind of want to watch some of these. Like, <laughs> yeah, not gonna lie, it's like some of these. Definitely a few of them. I kind of I want to go see her in WWE Raw. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> like I want to see what I would love to see her talking shit to another like another wrestler. I think that'd be great. So you were you were saying Ice that that some did you know how she passed away that there was some. Stuff mm-hmm. that you wanted to talk about, so why don't you go ahead and go um, ahead. So, uh, but her official cause of death on her death certificate was a, uh, a cerebrovascular right. accident, which medical medical slang for stroke. That makes sense. No, so, so she suffered from the stroke in, on Christmas Day. That sucks. Um, and she died December 31st. Right before um, New Year's Day. Yeah, from complications... From the stroke. Wow. I never thought we'd be talking about Betty White's death. Yeah, not in our lifetime. No, not not like not like this. Like I thought she'd go down fighting a balrog or something and <laughs> come up as uh, Betty Gray. Yeah. I, hey, you no, know no, what? No, dude... no, that's backwards. Be- um, <laughs> Betty the White. Betty the White. I fuck. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that's backwards. Betty the hey, White. I fell into that. I fell that into it. It's too. okay, but you 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 found something there, and yeah. Oh, you will greatly be missed. Too soon. And all three of these people that we spoke of, uh, we've we've already lost. I mean, just within a week time, we lost three great people. You know, it it, it just goes to, and and looking back at it, and getting a little serious for a moment. It just reminds you of your own mortality as a human being. We're not all going to be here forever. What legacy are you going to leave behind? What will someone say, will see, like, say the name Betty White and remember what she did? Uh, Bob Saget, remember what he did. John Madden, and remember what he did. And that that it's the legacy. These people have left behind greatness because they worked for that greatness. You would like to call and leave us a message something to review, a rant, a like, whatever. Something you want us to play, something you want us to watch. There is a number that you can call and leave a message. And that number is 559-997-6803. Again, that number is 559-997-6803. Don't forget to leave a like. Grizz, are you telling them to smash that bell? <laughs> oh, that's all. This is the last season for the podcast that we will be posting to Newgrounds. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, if, if you're a listener on Newgrounds, remember to check us out on, on YouTube or Anchor or... I say Anchor because that's like 10 other platforms. Uh, yeah. You can do Twitch, which we have streaming there. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be... Pick it back up on that myself. These two will be streaming on Twitch, on our Twitch. And so, guys, uh, with that said and done, thanks for watching this episode. We'll see you next week. We're getting closer and closer to the end of season eight. And like I've said, uh, I think we're gonna start doing this year hiatus. Maybe do a do a podcast a year instead of like two. Uh, the a last year. season, the last episode for this season will be what what one sixty, I believe. Yeah. So, all right, Somewhere guys. Until then, we'll see you next. We'll see you on the next episode. Stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always.